with self-feed silage, we need to uh, allow for sort of between uh, 18 to 24 centimeters wide per animal, depending on what silages are being used. Uh, usually with May silage, we would actually allow 18 centimeters per cow. And on grass silage, we allow 24 centimeters per cow wide. And that is essential really that we bear in mind we have enough feed space for all the animals that access the silage clamp. The feed is actually allocated by moving the wire within 50 centimetres of the feed face. It's enough to keep the cows not too close to the feed space, but also close enough for cows to actually eat the new feed. And usually we move the wire at 15 centimetres a day interval if the silage clamp is at the required height, which usually for cows works out about 2.1 to 2.2 metres. The maize and the grass silages ideally should be layered in the clamp uh, widthwise, but I, I prefer to see it layered in the clamp with first, second cut, and then maize, maize over the top if we can help it, or maize at, a, at an angle. All cows have access to whichever forage that they choose to eat at the space where they're at at that time. If it's in a separate clamp, what would tend to happen is that some cows will eat you know, grass silage one day and probably may silage the other day, rather than move them around from clamp to clamp. At times when concentrates or straight feeds tend to be reasonably prized, there's an opportunity to actually use the foragers as a way of pickling the concentrates. My farmer said in the past, he said, instead of actually, with, as you do with mix wagging, mixing the concentrates on a daily basis, I only mix it once a year. So it allows farmers to actually make use of cheaper concentrates at certain times of the year. Over the years, we had several uh, different types of concentrates being used. The, the main one that we tend to use is rapeseed to balance out the protein content of maize because that tended to be cheaper during the periods of August to September after the rapeseed harvest. The other one that we use as well is we tend to use wheat feed in with grass silages, uh, but also cereals have been used in grass silages as well. It all depends what's available at that time. When you're layering concentrate, you have to ensure we have a, a, a reasonable mix within the silage clamp itself, so we're not having too large a patch of concentrates in certain areas. And I do prefer when it's been put into the silage clamps that people use a push-up butt rake. It's the farmer himself that is there on the clamp, making sure that most of the concentrates are spread around the clamp very evenly. It's actually essential, especially where we start using concentrates in the silage clamp as well, that the, the silage is at the correct dry matter. The dry matter that I tend to go for is between 28 and 30% dry matter, no drier than that, because the concentrate cells are dry, and if the silage is dry, what tends to happen is that the air moves through the clamp very quickly. So it's important actually to use very hygienic clamp measure, uh, make sure everything's well consolidated and the dry matter is correct to exclude air at all costs. To make self-feed work very well for you, most important is to choose the, the correct stage of harvesting of grass, making sure that the grass is very palatable. Secondly, is to make sure that uh, there's no water running down the face of the clamp. That is very important because any time there's either the face is exposed to incoming rain or water running off the sheep, that will be an area where the cows won't, will not eat the silage. And also all, all cuts in the silage clamp have to be very well preserved and we don't want any different layers in the clamp of uh, different intakes.